Hey there, I'm Becky, and welcome to Literary Escapes with me, Becky. Today I have a fun interview with author Stephanie Harrell. She has taken fairy tales to a new level that I think you're going to love. If you are a fan of sexy romance, then you'll want to hang around and listen to this episode. Let's jump into the interview, Stephanie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> it's, I'm so glad that you agreed to join me on the podcast. I'm, I, well, I appreciate it. You were just so comfortable to talk with. So, well, I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. It's, uh, I love I, it. That's one of the things I like about having a podcast is being able to talk to people because I do like talking. So <laughs> <laughs> it makes it a good place to do it, I guess. <laughs> Right, right. You get to talk about books. Which exactly. Is what could be better? I love that. And it's been so much fun hearing so many different journeys to get to kind of the same place, you know, a published book. And it's, it's, I love the fact that there are so many different roads that go there. Oh, yeah. And I've listened to your podcast. So it's interesting for me to hear it too, just from other authors, because even though we are, maybe many of us are indie, like you said, we all have different paths. So it is exactly. really cool to kind of see like, what was that motivator? What was that spark that exactly. drove someone you know, to really jump into the profession? Because it's not always easy. Right. <laughs> you know, we learn as we go and hopefully we have, you know, really a really good support system. Right. That's as we, as we navigate the waters. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's not necessarily a quick journey. No. At, at all. true. I mean, it's fun because I mean, some people's from the first from the time they decided to start writing to their first published book is, you know, 12 years or something. Some, you know, some mm -hmm. people, it might be a couple of years, but um, it's not a quick journey. No, and it's you not. have to have good motivation and good support, like you said, to hang with it. So mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. So your journey, how did you get get going on this path? I mean, I think for me, I mean, I've always, and you probably hear this all the time, but, you know, I've always loved to write. And um, it's so funny that you should ask now because they're starting to pop up. My mom is finding um, these little books I've made in elementary school. Oh. So they would encourage us every year to write a story and then we'd make a cover for it and we'd make a title and we'd have an author page. Oh, so I like love my that. daughter. Yeah, my daughter, she came home one day. She's like, Mommy, I found a book you wrote when you were almost my age. Oh, and that's so fun. It's so cute. It's just so cute to see, like, you know, just that process. And, you know, at that time, I loved, like, fantasy. And, you know, just to see that kind of come to fruition, like, in these little kid books that I wrote. Yeah. And they and, count. Uh, yeah, right? So I guess I could say I was published. Um, <laughs> um, a very long time ago, but it was fun. It was just so much fun. And, you know, as I got older, I'd always kind of do like little spinoffs in my head of stories I would read and for, yeah. oh, pretend I was the main character. Um, and then years and years, like probably like 10 or 15 years ago, I started writing again and I thought, oh, I really enjoy this. And I had two people that were consistently reading it and they loved what I was writing. Nice. And, and then all of a sudden I just stopped and put it away. I was in a bad place and um, I put away the one thing I loved, which is uh, so crazy. We do that, you know? don't we? Especially yeah. as women, I think. I, guys might do it too. I have no idea. But um, right. as women, we tend to do that and make exactly. other other things and other people more important. Exactly. Exactly. And I just, I put it away and I forgot. And, you know, I know you chatted with Carrie Evelyn recently and her and I go back a long ways. We've been friends since college and we had gotten That's together right. on a girl's trip. Yeah. Oh, it's so, I love her. I love that. And, and we were chatting and it was the very first story she started to write and she started talking about it. And it was just, I remember sitting there and hearing her and thinking, oh my gosh, like I had a story. I had a romantic suspense. I had over a hundred pages typed oh sitting gosh. in my closet. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've done nothing with this. And I'm like, well, here's my friend who's taking the steps to be able to do it. And I just, you know, and I, we chatted a little bit and I had said to her, oh, you know, you know, I would love to write too. And I just kind of left it at that. And, you know, I just really listened and absorbed, you know, what she was saying. And that was, I want to say, I think 2016. Okay. And then um, soon after that, I had my se second and third child. So I had a set of twins. 
And I kind of put the dream aside again. Understandably. (laughs) Right. Yeah. (laughs) We were quite busy those first few years. (laughs) No doubt. And and, um, I remember, I think it was 2018 and her and another friend of ours, um, an author, Chelsea Delane, they knew I wanted to write because at this point I had started beta reading for Carrie and she's like, I just don't understand why you're not writing. She's like, the feedback you give and the things that you write. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. And um, so her and Chelsea, were like, they pushed me to NaNoWriMo. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what it is, is you write as many words as you can in 30 days, but the goal is to write 50,000 words. And wow. I had never heard of this before. And I'd never heard of the concept before. Um, and I thought, okay, sure. Why not? You know? So I talked to my husband. I was like, I'm going to write. And I, every single night I sat there after the kids went to bed. And I wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote for hours. I'd go to so, bed at midnight, one, two in the morning. Wow. So 50,000 words in a month, a 30 a day month. month. Um, how many words does that equal a day or like how many words were you writing? It's, I don't know when if you they, did it every well, when day. They break it, when they break it down, I think it's around, I think the average is about 1,666 a day. I might be, I'm, okay. I'm not doing the math in my head. So I can yeah. do uh, But I think when they broke it down, it's something similar to that. Okay. Um, and so I was probably writing approximately that because we'd have to keep track every day. Okay. And and I would just sit there and write. So I started off as a pantser. So as a pantser, you don't have any format. You don't have a plot. You don't have, I had an idea. I had an idea okay. in my head that came to me as I was driving the, like three days before it started. And I just started writing and I crafted the story and I wrote it. And at the end, I think I might've had like 51,000 words. I think I had just That's over. That's awesome. And I was thrilled and excited. And I sent, I think the first chapter to Carrie and she's like, this is so good. And then she started telling me, you know, but here are some of the things you have to start thinking about as an author. I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> so you, you don't, mm. you don't just sit there and write a story. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and so she helped me, she helped me work on it. She gave me feedback and I hired an editor immediately because I realized very quickly I had no clue what I was doing. Right. And so with the editor, I definitely, she helped me realize the story structure. She helped me realize there's a first, a second, and a third act. Right. And, you know, so she would make these little comments in my editor and the editor would make these little comments and she'd say, oh, you know, at the second act, this should be happening. Like this is 50%. Right. This this is, is, there's these things that have to happen right. at certain so, points-ish. Exactly. So you talk about on-the-job training. Yeah. That was how I started to learn, like, what do you need to craft a story? And how do you write a good story? Um, a story that readers not just want to read, but intrinsically, you know, as a reader, what a story should look like, what it should sound like, what it should right. feel like. Especially, I think, and, as a romance reader, there are expectations going into it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and they're like, well, what tropes are you going to write? So now here's the funny thing. That first story that I wrote was an urban fantasy. <laughs> it was an urban fantasy with an element of romance. Okay. And so we started talking about trope. And I said, what the heck is a trope? Right. Like, <laughs> I had no idea. And it's, and that is so important. You know, I have found as I'm writing, you know, that there are, you know, when you start writing your story, what are the parts, what are the tropes that you're focusing on? Whether it's, you know, fake dating or second chance or, you know, opposites attract, or, I mean, there's so many, there's, there's so, so many, many and know? they all have their own way of being. Yes. And everybody gravitates towards what they want to read, whether they realize it or not. Cause exactly. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know exactly. a trope existed, but I read certain books and mm-hmm. I enjoyed certain books. And there's books. certain ones that, you know, you really like, and yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so, you know, that was really such an eye opener for me um, as an author. And, you know, Carrie was instrumental because she was, she helped guide me. Yeah. And she said, okay, you know, you've got this story. Let's, you know, get to get beta readers together. And I was like, okay, great. You know, and, and, you know, I get readers who are going to read my story for the first time. And that's I so scary, feedback. isn't it? Oh my gosh. You know, so I'm a person who I like, I'm a people pleaser. I, I don't like hurting people's feelings. Um, and so I was really concerned about how I would take constructive feedback. Right. And because I've heard stories or authors say, you know, they had their feelings hurt. It was really hard to read. It was hard to take. It was just, but you have to push through it. And I thought, you okay. have to, if you want to get better and actually and that's, be yes. a, you know, an author who does this for a living. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I knew I wasn't where I needed to be. And so oddly enough, when I first got those edits back to my editor, I devoured it. 
And I, I couldn't wait. I was like, okay, give me more. And she's like, I don't hurt your feelings. I'm like, hurt my feelings. Just do yeah, it. Yeah, do it. Um, <laughs> you know, because it's never done with any malicious intent, right. you know, right. and I think, and you know that, difference. and I, that's exactly it. And I think that, you know, as a beginning author, you want your book to be the best it can be. Mm-hmm. And sometimes actually, I mean, for me, especially I, I do need other people's feedback and yeah, it's helpful because you can't always see like the plot holes. You can't see those little pieces that need to be changed or fixed. Well, and but you're yeah. so into the story that, you know, yes. in your head, everything that happened or that you're thinking, even if it's not on the paper. Exactly. So and, and right. And so it's you hard to separate that. Something. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody comes back and they're like, what are you talking about? You know, it's like, so, oh yeah, I didn't actually mention that. <laughs> that right, right, and you forget, or you don't get yeah. the depth, the depth that it needs either. And so, you know, when I had the beta readers, it was great because I had some people who wrote back and said, "I don't know if this is the story for me." Okay. If you're writing, I enjoy your writing, but it's not for me. And I said, "Okay," so you know, so it helped me kind of define like who who's a good reader for me. You know, right, when you talk right. About, you know, we're trying to figure out like, who are we trying to reach? And, you know, that's an important piece, isn't it? Wow. Exactly. And so, you know, when I kept saying, I wanted everyone to be super honest with me. And so it was a really great learning experience, a great tool. And I still love that story. It's not published. (laughs) Um, I do hope to publish it. That is my goal in the next like five years or so is to try to also publish that because it's to be a, it was to be a series. Okay. Um, of, of 11 books. So and that one was urban fantasy. It was an urban fantasy. Yeah. 11 books. I, wow. I, yeah. So that was my projected planning. Um, but I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know enough about writing mm-hmm. to be able to write something like that because, you know, there's a magic system involved. You know, the characters is, you know, there's 10 very important characters or really 20, but I didn't really know what I didn't know at the time. And right. I think that was the failing for me. And so maybe not a failing, but a learning experience. Yeah. I mean, there's a really steep learning curve and it, yes. it might take, you know, depending on your journey, like we were talking earlier, you know, that curve might be extended over however many years, <laughs> or it might yes. be like super quick, yes. but you still have to go through it. And that's exactly it. And I think that that was my journey and that was the learning and that was understanding the craft and, you know, and I was able to move forward because I had support and, you know, from there, Carrie reached out to me and she said, Hey, listen, we're doing um, a fairy tale Academy. Would you like to do it? I thought, okay. Is that your story? That's in once upon a, what's it? Once Once upon a Academy. Yes. yes. Okay. That was my song. And I also have it separately too. Awesome. Um, but Song of the Reaper. So we all chose a different fairy tale and I chose the Pied Piper. Oh, fun. And so I had the absolute best time writing that. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. And I thought, oh my gosh, how can you make the Pied Piper fun and, and romantic? And because it's not, most of my books now are high heat. That is not a high heat book. There's romance and there's, you know, but they're a little younger. Um, they're just in with sense of the Academy romance, but and it was my first foray into writing. I only had 25,000 words that I could reuse. So, okay. Wow. Well, um, you have to mind exactly use your words down. well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But it was great because I really got to put to use, like I started, I started using the three X structure structure at that time. And I was able to plan out my story in a way, like, cause I did write it as a pantser still. Okay. But when I went back over it, um, I was doing, um, some story coaching with Megan Fuentes. Okay. And so she sat down with me for, <laughs> we talked for like two or three hours and she went over the story and she helped me pull out the pieces that were not important. Okay. And she helped me figure out, you know, how to tighten it and how to really align it with a three act structure. And um, so that was really such a huge, huge help for me because again, I'm still, I was still a new author. Yeah. I was still learning. But because I only had the 25,000 words, I had to really figure it out. And mm-hmm. I had to figure it out fast because this was my debut novel. And yeah. if people didn't like it, they're not going to read me again, you know, <laughs> or they might not actually, you know, so, you know, there's, I, I felt a little bit of pressure because of that. I wanted it to be like as fantastic as it could be. Yeah. And, 
you know, when I was done with it, I loved it. I have to say, like, I love this. I cried at the end. Like, I'm writing it and I'm crying. And, you know, it was just this emotional journey with these three sisters and, you know, and their family and things like that. And when it finally released and and people read it and they resonated and they just said, oh, my gosh, I saw myself. Like, I see me and my sisters and them. And, you know, I love your story. Yeah, it was so beautiful. Um, and, And Carrie's funny because I related the Pied Piper to Reaper's. Oh, and okay. she had said there's very few Reaper books that she likes to read. <laughs> so there's a handful of authors that she enjoys. And she said, you know, it really, it gave her a different way to think about them. You know, That's interesting. The, the, yeah. The, the profession as a whole, because uh, there's a curse placed upon the Piper family. Uh, ah, I love yeah. it. I love it. I'm going to have to go yeah. find that one. That sounds like, yeah. that sounds like a fun one. It is. It's, it was really, it was a lot of fun to, to write. And oddly enough, that determined my career trajectory and yeah I sat Curious. down with with a mentor and I um and I was talking this was a few years ago her name is Narelle Todd and and so we started chatting about my books and I said well okay I you know I want to keep writing and I have this urban fantasy and she's great like she really is she's like a tough love Okay. Kind of person. And again, with the, with the constructive criticism and, Mm -hmm. you know, she did it in a way and she said, so here's where I see you. You've already kind of established yourself in a contemporary romance with fairy tales. Right. That's a fun place to be. Yeah. And she said, (laughs) do you think this is something you could continue? She said, because right now you're not, you didn't start with the urban fantasy. That's very, very different. And you're so new. It's probably not a good idea to hop from one genre right. to another to another. Stay in your lane. Yeah. And then in a few years, branch off and do the urban fantasy. And so I knew she was right. I didn't want to mm-hmm. hear it because I loved my urban fantasy. That was my baby. Well, and you get so many different ideas and, ooh, I like this. You know, maybe I should try yes. that. It's it's yes. hard to just do one thing for for an extended period of time. It is. It absolutely is. But I sat down and I thought about it and I said, okay, can I do this? First of all, can I, and okay. I do I want to, because right. I'm a big, a big fan of writing what you enjoy reading enjoy, oh, yeah. you know, and, and just enjoy the writing process. Because at the time I had three really small children, you know, yeah. three, I, had two, I think it was two, three-year-olds and a five-year-old. Oof. And I had two, very limited time. And if I wanted to do this, I wanted to do it right. And uh, so I sat down and so I had this like crazy idea. And I remember at this time, Carrie had corralled a few of us together and we started a critique group. And I said, I was almost embarrassed to bring this idea. So like, it's probably so silly. You guys are all, they're probably just going to shoot it down. And and not that they're like that because they're not. Right, right. But that's what we tell ourselves in our head, isn't it? It's this this, this imposter syndrome that tries to get us every time. And and I said, okay, so I have this, this, this idea. I'm thinking fairy tales. What if I said Cinderella didn't leave the ball at midnight? And they're like, okay. I said, she meets the prince and they decide to have a one night stand. <laughs> and they're, they're like, okay. And I go, and she doesn't leave a slipper, but she leaves behind a pair of underwear. <laughs> and, so oh my gosh. We, and they're like, oh, that could work. And Ooh. so we had this fantastic brainstorming session about what kind of underwear she was going to leave behind. Because I had already decided the Cinderella character was going to be a plus size curvy girl uh, and that she was she was she had creating a plus size lingerie company. That's what she wanted oh. to do. She wanted to create plus size lingerie with empowering messages because she felt Ooh. that plus size girls don't hear that enough. Yes. And, and so that, that was her goal. And so this so they were like, oh, my gosh, she's got to leave granny panties. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So I was like, that would be the, like, so funny. And so in it, I had, it was one of her first pairs, like a mock pair that she like right. stitched on. And so, you know, that oh was kind of like what she left behind. And that was the only thing he had to know who she was because, you know, she had a, she, not that she was disguising herself, but I had had it. So her hair was dyed blue that night. She just looked a little bit different and they didn't right. they clearly didn't run in the same circle. Exactly. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was the start of an entire series. <laughs> oh, I love it. And so which, what is that one called? So that one is fake dating Mr. Prince. It's okay. the first one in the curvy ever after series. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And that's when I made a shift too, because prior to that, um, 
I had never given a lot of thought to writing curvier plus size heroines. Mm -hmm. And I still remember this. And I was actually, I reached out to her the other day, Edie Award. Um, She's a paranormal romance author. And I had emailed her years ago, right? Because I was starting to read her books. And I said, you know, I just started writing. And I didn't, I said, I don't know why this didn't seem like common sense to me, but I just realized I've been reading your books. I'm like four or five in and I have not yet written a curvy girl and I am, that's who I am. Yeah. And I said, there was this, I don't know if it was a block in my mind that I couldn't write a character like that. And, and, and I said, oh my gosh, I said, thank you so much for showing me that I can write characters that I can relate to. Yeah. That I can see that I can. How many women are going to be able to relate to that? I mean, holy moly! Yeah, and it was so empowering, and it was so. It was I don't know. It was almost like she gave me permission to like start thinking that way, and and she had been writing curvy girls for years at this point, and I just said I just you know I said I rarely rarely write to authors because I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know if they right. Yeah, I wasn't writing really myself then, and you know, and I just said I just want to thank you so much for that, and you know, and so that. And so when I started planning this series, it was really important to me to have, you know, and I know there's so many terms now that many people use curvy versus plus size versus fat representation. And I think that, you know, it's becoming comfortable with whatever term that you want to use because plus size is a little different than curvy. Um, But I think that there's more and more. I mean, that's, I can honestly say I've had readers who have written to me or posted comments on some of my posts and they said, you know, I never thought I could see myself wow. in a romance novel until I read your book. And of course, like, then you sit there and you're like, I just want a happy cry. Yeah. It, it touches your heart Aww. that somebody feels that way. It touches my heart, you know? Yeah. There's so much, uh, there's so much diversity in the world, but there's not so much diversity in literature, you know, in novels yes. and romance. Right. There's these idealized heroes and heroines mm-hmm. that you don't see a lot of that so right yeah and it's it, you're absolutely right and you know and right now with my with the curvy ever after we have our plus size heroines and then you know if you see the covers of my books you got some pretty dress. hot guys yeah yeah so <laughs> so they're not- sexy and steamy and curvy size which is it- pretty yeah, awesome because a- usually the curvy girl is like the uh the funny best friend or something like that you know right, right. they get like the, yes exactly the, the side, side character, character sidekick yeah and I didn't want that and I didn't want that and you know and so it's been a great journey and I have to say because there's currently there's four books out in that series and one three and four all of the female heroines are very comfortable in their plus size bodies nice. and you know, they're, and it's the only one that's not is my second story. And so with that one, it's more of a journey for her because there was, you know, some shaming involved when she was younger and ridicule. And so it was her getting over that and then the hero helping her. Well, and I would think that that's something that a lot of readers can relate to as well. I think so. I think so. And it was hard too, because I think that, you know, it's when you write those type of stories, you know, sometimes you do think about yourself. And, mm-hmm. you know, reading is an escape and not everybody wants to read about that journey, though. I think, right. and, you know, going through the mental process of, you know, putting that in the past and, and being in loving yourself as you are right, right now. And, right. and it's not that that character didn't love herself at all, but she still had some hangups over it based on the past. And so, right. you know, it was definitely her getting over that, um, you know, when, you know, after she got together with the hero. So, ah. you know. But I think, but moving forward, most of my heroines are very comfortable in their skin and their body. Like and, and I do, that's more of what I want to portray mm-hmm. with my stories. Right. You know? I like that. That's fun. So you said that there's four in the series right now. So mm-hmm. what's number two and which so fairy tale does it relate to? So number two is surprise baby. So okay. I, I threw the tropes are in with each one. So it's surprise baby for Mr. Fisher. And that one is a little mermaid. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So with that one, right. I know it deviates. So my, mine are fairy tales, almost like reimagined 
and it's uh-huh. like not always just a retelling because there are different twists. Sure, I take elements from the stories, okay, and put them and weave them into it. Um, and so that's a lot of what I do. And, and all of my stories are set at some point in Rhode Island. Okay, so I use that as my setting. It's where I live, so it's easy for me to write what I know. Yeah, um, and it's fun too because I'll have I may not always list you know a place with its real name, but if you're from here, or you visited here. A lot of people you probably like, know oh it. My yeah, gosh, I know what you're talking about. Like, I know this. <laughs> You know, and it was cool because in the second book, I had permission from the, uh, there's a tree farm nearby and I was able to actually, you know, get permission to put them in my book. And, you know, that was because um, I knew their, their niece. And so okay. some of the places are listed are actual real places. But if I, you know, sometimes I'm careful too, because if I didn't get permission, I don't always know if they want to be part of a scene. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because uh, there's yeah. an implication that it's being you know, that they're supporting it or, you know, right. Right. And and I think for, it's hard to, for businesses. I mean, and I would never put it in my stories if I didn't have a positive mm-hmm. reaction or response to the business itself. Right. So if it's, right. if it's there, it's probably because it's a place I enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, the second book is, was a really a deep dive into like growing up for me because we used to vacation down in Matunic. And it's these beaches and we'd have a little house and my cousin, some of my cousins would stay and family. And, um, and so I got to kind of revisit what it was like to be in the beachy areas. And I got to think a lot about that, you know, in the beginning part of the book where it is. And, Aww. and so that was really fun for me to, is fun, to, yeah. to think back, you know, and incorporate some of my life in little ways into the story, whether, mm-hmm. you know, I might expand on it or change it a little, but there's still some element of truth there. That's fun. It's a lot of fun. So number three is Taming Grumpy Dr. Beast. Okay. And that's Beauty and the Beast, maybe? That is Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so and that then was, what's number four? And number four is Second Chance for Mr. Alden. And that one is actually an Aladdin retelling. Oh, cool. um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So that one's a little bit different um, in the way it's written because I only take some elements from the story, but it's different enough. And that one's actually a little bit of a suspense. Ooh. too, uh, which was very different for me to write. Uh, and it was really nice. I'd gotten some feedback from TJ Logan, uh-huh. who writes romantic suspense. And I knew she you'd does. spoken to her. Yeah. yeah. And so she was so great because I had a few scenes in there. I said, you know, can you just give it a little bit of a look through? Because it, it was not a genre that I write in all the time. And I wanted to make sure it was authentic. And uh, yeah, and she was such an incredible help, you know, with that. And I love her stories too. Yeah. Yeah. She's got some fabulous romantic suspense going on so she does and I like her covers too (laughs) yes I know I know I can't wait for the next one to come out I'm waiting for it yeah yeah she's uh she she was fun to talk to I enjoyed that so I was poking around on your website and one of the things that you wrote was about how you name your characters Mm -hmm. and so I wanted to see how do you how do you name your characters that's funny. I, well, there's two different ways. So when I name a character, sometimes it just feels right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I think about the character, I'm like, okay, well, what is that? But a lot of times I like to think about the meaning of the name mm-hmm. and associate that to what I'm writing. And, right. you know, and so like that, so with my first book, Song of the Reaper, the girls were Lyra, Aria, um, oh my gosh, and I'm forgetting my last girl's name, Kay. Her last name was Kay, but it was Cadence. Isn't that okay. terrible? That's um, so funny. But yes, yeah, so they called her Kay because I was trying to think of it with the nickname. Uh, but it, all of it had something to do with music. Oh, nice. And so, yeah. And so I tried to think a little bit like that. And so sometimes when I'm naming the characters, I fall on, you know, what does it mean? Or, you know, how does it connect to the story in some way? That's so cool. like my my fifth book coming up is a Red, Ride, Red Riding Hood. Okay. And so I've named her Ruby. Nice. Yeah. Yes. And so and you'll see the huntsman is Hunter. Okay. And the wolf, his last name is Wolf. So <laughs> some of it is very specific. Like it's, right, there's, right. No, there's no hidden meaning to it. <laughs> right. I love that. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it helps, so. it helps the reader connect to, oh, this is the wolf character or, yes. you know, that kind of thing, which... Yes. Is nice as a reader. Exactly. I mean, I don't, I, I don't like to think too much when I read. To be no, honest no. with you, 
<laughs> it's, it's hard sometimes to come up with the names, you know? So when I started thinking about, you know, I think, you know, for the Cinderella story, you know, the, the hero is Dean, but his last name is Prince. Okay. And so that's how I tied in the whole Prince piece. And then I'm a big fan of Jensen Ackles. So his character is Dean. <laughs> it's supernatural. That's oh, funny. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I then, like you that. Know, Cinderella of the Ashes, I chose Ashlyn. So, you know, so thinking okay. about that, it is very fun. I have to say, like, that's probably one of the, I really enjoy that part and trying to pick apart names and decide yeah. like, who they're going to be and how does it mean, what does it mean? And um, my sixth book is a Snow White retelling. And, you know, I'm still, still toying with her name. I have a couple of ideas. Okay. Um, I have a little bit of time left for that because I won't be out until at least April, but. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. And so you obviously have the whole series kind of planned out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do the characters connect to each other or is it just the fairy tale that connects them? So they're all standalones, but I do interconnect characters. So from the very first book, at the very end, you meet Harper, okay. who is the heroine in the second story. And she becomes really good friends with Ashlyn and her stepsister, Stella. And okay. so you'll see them hanging out and they're really good friends and they kind of carry through to that story. Um, the third story, you see the hero for a very brief period of time in the very this, first book. Got, oh, okay. So he's like a side character. Um, he's a good, he's one of the uh, best friends with Dean, the, the hero. And then his love interest is a new character. Okay. And then, and then when you move into the fourth story, you meet Ruby throughout the fourth book so with book five you'll see ruby a little bit throughout and so i try to introduce the characters so they're not completely little. new or anything but you don't exactly. have to have read book four to enjoy no. book five or anything like no. that and they're and all in the same town they are well they're on the same state so they might travel back and forth the one that it's that a small state on, so <laughs> it is it's kind of like a town right <laughs> I love it. I love how <laughs> small we are. Um, but it's funny that Taming Grumpy Dr. Beast was the one that I actually set outside of Rhode Island because I had to do the force proximity. Okay, and it was right. much easier to do that on an estate further away from her home. And so I had, I did, so they were in upstate New York um, okay. with that story, but they, it starts in Rhode Island and it ends in Rhode Island. So, so I still was able to keep, you know, that piece of it as well. Nice. And so the upstate New York piece, um, how did you find where you wanted them to be? You know, it's funny. I made up, it, it didn't ever really gave the town a name, but I kind of just like made it up and Carrie actually had given me some suggestions um, of different towns there. I forget the actual name of it, but she, you know, when she described it, she's like, it's an adorable little upstate town. And, you know, you, I could see there being this big mansion up there. And I was like, oh, that's perfect. And I started mapping out, well, how far away is it from Rhode Island? Right. Like, okay. It's, and because I try to, you know, it's like, I'm like, it's a little over three and a half hours. Oh, that could really work, you know? Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. And so it was kind of like figuring out that distance and making it close enough and, and tying it still into Rhode Island. So I still was able to get that piece of it. Um, nice. Okay. In the story, the heroine, her father, um, is, is facing he has dementia he's alzheimer's mm -hmm. and um and so she doesn't want to be too far from him but didn't realize it was an on-site job when they had to accept it ah. uh, so yes exactly. okay so in that one she had to go she's going in place of her father because he's contracted by the local university and um she's going there to to uh, restore this book and that's what her father does he's a, he's contracted but because he's not able to always remember what he's doing and he's struggling. She has been helping him. Aww. And so she's been doing it in secret, which she's able to do because they can do the work at home until she's suddenly forced to leave their house mm. and, and have to go to this estate. Gotcha. And then she realizes that the hero is the same guy that she had a very negative interaction with in the first chapter. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it takes it takes him a little longer to realize who she is, but she realizes who he is right away. Okay. And so, yeah. So it was really fun. I had never written a grumpy character before, yeah. and so so I had to, I have to laugh at this. So I had to write myself a reminder because I'd had a friend of mine read the first chapter, and she's like, "You've got to be grumpier." Okay, I can do this. And I literally wrote out a sheet of paper that says, "I am grumpy, Jackson." <laughs> And so I had to look at that page every single All day. All the time. Yeah. 
That's so and it funny. Helped. It helped. It kept me in that the right mindset because he is, he's a little bit of a jerk. And then, you know, but as he starts to fall for the heroin, you know, you could see him soften around her. And I think that's the part that I really love is to see he's, you know, he's really broken, you know, in, in some ways and to see him come together with her and, and um, watching them fall in love. That was, that was really fun for me. That's awesome. How fun. How often, how long does it typically take you to write a book? So I have evolved as I started writing. So in the very beginning, I was a pantser. Then I tried to get really, really structured and become a plotter. And I realized it did not work for me. And then um, actually through 80 award, I found the W plot, which is a different um, plot structure. Okay. Start filling things in. Um, and that resonated with me and how she described it. And so I was able to start using that with my writing. As long as if I do it for both characters, the way it's laid out is I, I end up with almost like 20 chapters with a back and oh, forth. Wow. And, okay. And so- you know, that was, that was super helpful um, too. And so for me, I've learned that I am, some people call it a planter. Yeah. And so I'm kind of, I straddle both worlds because I have to know a general story idea, but I can just sit there and write as well. My problem is, is I'm very wordy. Okay. So if I'm left to my own devices without a little bit of structure, like just enough, I will sit there and just write, 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 write. (laughs) And then it I'll, I will go in that and I'll go back to my first book where my editor said, you're at the 50% mark. You should be here. Point? <laughs> exactly. And so it was, that was something that I always think about when I write, Okay. you know, and then I kind of write around that and say, okay, where am I? And, and, you know, I think the beauty of it is, is you can try out all these different ways because nobody is the same, you know, right. even if you are, everyone's a pantser, you probably have a different way that you write. And so, Agreed. you know, that was. And that was for me trying to figure out my process and I still tweak it and fine tune it Mm -hmm. and and all of that. But I have found certain ways that work for me. So if I create kind of like a loose framework for my story, if I had the time and I could write every single day, I probably could write a story in four to six weeks, like an 80,000 word story. Okay. So, and that's pushing it and that's, you know, but it's also hard to, you know, and I, I have become more mindful because my first year of really writing I was doing it from eight o'clock at night till two in the morning, religiously every single night. And I was so tired. I was tired all the time, all the time. And, you know, I I had that burning desire to build my backlist and Mm -hmm. to get books out there for people to to read me. And that was, and I'm, it's funny. I I said, make it sound like I've been doing this for years, but this is really my second year. Oh, wow. Holy moly. my curvy after after because I'd done you know the song of the reaper earlier but that was with an anthology it wasn't on my own and you know and I wow. started to pull back a little bit this year and say okay yes now I know you want to publish some of a backlist it, and yeah. exactly exactly and you know I started to prioritize you know time at home and I'm not that it doesn't get crazy around deadlines or when sure. I have a book that's about to be published but you know I'm not doing that and staying up super late because I'm no good you know, yeah. The next day. You're not good for anybody at that point. So yeah, exactly. You yeah, know, so, that. so nice. ideally, yeah, I try to write it in like one to two months okay. and then I try to get feedback from a critique group and then I send it on to the editor. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So what are you working on now? So right now I am working on book five and six, Okay. Of the curvy ever after story. Um, and then I also joined an anthology. It's the romance I think we decided on romance curves. So we have all plus size that rest nice. um, stories and we're going to release that in March for, so the story itself will be for about three months and people can get it. We're going to do it through book funnel. And so people can go and they can get the stories. And then after that, you know, I can publish it on my own. So okay. I think, I think I'm choosing a character that from the story I just published because I'm starting to get feedback from readers that they want to know what happened to these two characters. Oh. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the sister of the hero Alden and his best friend. And nice. so there's a little bit of an age gap, you know, little sister, um, all of that. So I'm excited to tell their story because I didn't even know what was happening until the words were on the page. It wasn't. Oh, wow. I didn't, that I didn't so plan, crazy. I, I love that. I didn't plan their romance. They just kind of happened. Um, and, and it's just these little tiny moments. You hear them bickering back and forth, but people can like, you can see and right. feel 
you know, like that tension between them. Yeah. So I'm excited to start working on Lexi and Gage's story. And then um, I will be starting a new series next year. And so I'll be working on the prequel for that as well. And so okay. he, he actually also shows up in the fourth book. He's a little bit of a jerk. Um, but I think that he's going to be fun. And I think that I have a little bit, I can redeem him enough because he didn't go too, too far off the deep end. Yeah. Um, and so he's going to actually be the intro to my next series, which is where I want to go with bad boys reimagine. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited. It's so funny because as a writer, you start seeing the shiny objects off in the distance and, you know, so I'm like, I just want to get focused. there and write that one. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I'm so excited about like my Snow White book. And, and as I'm getting excited about Snow White, because she intertwines a lot with the Red Riding Hood, I'm excited about that. And then I keep thinking about the next series, but it'll be fun because I, you know, I sat down and I was like, okay, well, what are the bad boys that I want to write about? And, you know, I have like Hook and um, Jack Frost. Oh, and, um, fun. So they're going to stay in the kind of the fairy tale realm then. They are. Yeah. So, and so some nice. of them aren't traditional fairy tales, which is why it is definitely more of a reimagined series mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, I'll be going off of that, but I'm excited, you know, and, That's Robin Hood. Cool. and so they all, but all of those guys are connected. So for the first time I'm starting a series, knowing that and seeing, you know, how all of the characters connect versus right now, like when I first started this, this series, the curvy ever after I just had written one book. Okay. And then I entered characters and I wrote the second and then, you know, entered a few and I wrote the third. And so I'm starting, I've started to plan more on the series and where it's going, but I didn't know enough to do that when I first, first started. Right. Right. Cause I know some yeah. people when they write, they have like the whole series plotted out and mm -hmm. you know, the, I know Carrie has a whole like series Bible, I think is what she, she calls does. It, yes. And knows like where people are at when and yes. all that, that well, just boggles a, my mind exactly and she's a very specific timeline I leave mine a little loose I mean I have a time frame and typically when one of my stories ends one of them pick up um in my um I think which story it was in my third book there's a tiny bit of overlap okay when it first starts so you'll see at the end of surprise baby for Mr. Fisher she's pregnant Right, okay baby, and um and then but you'll see so at the end of her book she has the baby okay but then when you get into the third book it's like days before she gives birth okay it starts okay. there and so she's pregnant in that book and okay so you know it's cool. kind of referencing that and then moving forward but most of them kind of just follow the next one but there's no years associated so it really could be right. at any time okay um but it's but I mean, I agree with Carrie. It is important to have kind of like a story Bible too, because especially with with a series, you know, I found that as I was writing Red, writing Red Riding Hood, I thought, oh my gosh, wait a minute, because she did pop up so often in the last story. How, how did I how did I describe her bakery? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. How did I describe this? How did I describe that? How was she viewed by each of those characters? And so, you know, I want to make sure I'm true and I'm consistent. Exactly. In how I I bring forth her personality in the next story and. You know, and that's that's kind of the fun part too. Like when you see your readers get excited about a side character or a couple, and then they show yeah. up and like, "Oh my gosh, I've been waiting for these two. You know? <laughs> oh, that's fun. I love that. That's really cool. Um, so, what are you reading right now? So, I am actually rereading. Well, I I kind of jump. I jump around. I read fast, and I and have a very varied reading interest. So, um, you know, recently I just finished a book by Ella Blake. She's a sci-fi romance. Um, Cassandra Chandler, like literally this is all within the last like four days. Cassandra Chandler, um, she wrote Dorn. And so she, those are sci-fi romance. Um, and then also too, because AD Award is coming out with her recent, her, um, so she does like Dragons with Curves uh, and then another series about wolves. And so her, another wolf shifter book is going to be coming out. So I'm actually starting oh, that series again because I want to remember the details. Yeah. So when I read the yeah. last one. I'll, um, I'll be able to get back through that. So awesome. So that's kind of where I am right now. And then I bop around to, you know, contemporary romance. Um, and then the Insta, I have to, I surprised myself this year. I started reading a lot of the Insta love, you know, stories. Oh, so like, there's yeah, short like stories, London, right? Yeah. Cat yeah. Monster. Um, there's a bunch of, you know, so there's, and it's nice because when I am in the mood to read, 
but I don't want to get sucked into it too. Like, cause I'll just get sucked in and just be like, Oh, forget it. I'll read the whole thing. Yeah. That's all I'm doing and, today. <laughs> right. And I was like, Oh, I was supposed to write two chapters. I really had a lot I needed um, to do. <laughs> yep. So they're nice because they still give me that sense of satisfaction with, I get, you know, the love and, yeah. you know, the, the cute like stories and, and all of that sweet, you know, sweet romance and uh, well, not always sweet. I, I read a lot of, I read a lot of spicy, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, but it gives me enough, you know, so it's a, you know, 50 to hundred page, you know, book and I can read it really fast and then be done with nice. it and, and go back to and what move on to life. Do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's awesome. So where can readers hang out with you? Where do you like to um, have people go to, I guess. Typically, uh, you can find me in my Facebook group. Okay. And so that's Steph space. And also too, I'm on TikTok. So I do, I do a lot of page flips. I'm starting to, to get my face on the screen a little bit. Uh, and let's see. Yeah. TikTok still confuses me, but I, you know, I, I love going on there. Phone. I just don't post a lot. Cause I don't, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having so much fun with it. I was super nervous mm -hmm. when I started posting because I thought, oh my God, I'm a perfectionist. And for me not to understand what to do or how to do it was very, very daunting for me. Yes. And I had friends that were just like, just do it. And bye, I did, bye, I jumped bye. in. Right? Exactly. We're almost enemy. And so I jumped in and I started videos and I started connecting with, you know, various readers on there and cool. you know, the book talkers. And it was just, I, I had a lot of fun just kind of commenting and it was great. You know, there was one, one reader who I remember I just commented on her post. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is the funniest thing ever. I can't believe you did that. Like, I don't think I would keep a straight face. And so she started commenting back and forth. And then I ended up sending her a private message. I forget why. And then she's like, Oh my gosh, you should do videos. If you do, you know, tag me, I think it, you'll be fine. You can do it. You can do it. And it was Aww. just so sweet. The support. I That's thought, awesome. Oh gosh, yeah. Like, How fun. Yeah. And so that was, it's been really wonderful, you know, to see the supportive, you know, what readers it, and writers. It's such a cool thing that you can find readers that way, you know, I mean, and that readers yes. can connect with authors in this way, because right. I mean, when I was growing up, you didn't connect with authors. No. I mean, you didn't, maybe write them a letter and it went through mm -hmm. their publisher kind of a deal. Right. But I mean, they probably had book tours, maybe, I don't know, but I didn't live been. in a place where they would have, but, um, right. Same. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I have no idea if those happened or not, but, um, yeah, you didn't get to mm -hmm. know authors. Like you have the potential oh. to do today, which is such a crazy thing. It is. It really is. And it's fun because, you know, I mean, I fangirl too, you know, when I see different authors. Oh, like, totally. Oh gosh, yeah. Like, you know, look, oh, I have a new book out and what's this, what's that? And so it's kind of neat to see it because it's so different on there because I think on other platforms like Facebook, you know, we'll see like different posts like, oh, this book release coming up or that coming up. And, and that, there's conversations, but, you know, I know for me, I use like different like page flips or I'll hold a book and I'll do scenes from my story. And it's kind of neat to be able to read that you know, even though they're short little clips, but you get mm -hmm. a sense of what the books are about. It's not just the blurb on the back, but you're getting right. a scene. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I mean, I've been intrigued plenty of times where I'm like, oh, I'm just going to jump on my I really need to read that. Yeah. You know, I'm like, oh, let's check this book out. Like I'll add that to my list now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when it's ever growing kinda, list. Oh my gosh. Right. You know, I, oh gosh, I think it's not, they're not all physical books because I wouldn't be able to live in my house, you know? <laughs> I, I feel you. So Facebook, TikTok, and then you have an email list, right? I do. I also my newsletter. I actually, um, I, that's something I, I do weekly and I love awesome. it because I try to send like personal mess messages out and, you know, kind of talk about, you know, what's going on with my writing, what's going on in my life. And I love know, I say, authors like, newsletters. I think they're so cool. And, and it, it, it's so interesting. Everybody's a little bit different. And, you know, there's, it, when I read something that's, that like touches me, Mm -hmm. You know, it, it kind of, it's really inspiring. And, you know, the last couple of newsletters I've written about, you know, something personal, like, and I actually wrote about like my writing journey and, you know, like realizing your dream or not even realizing it was there until, yeah. you know, like that seed is planted and, you know, just, and also why I write curvy girls and, you know, how I viewed myself over the years and how it was important to me nice. um, to have that representation and to have people read the newsletter and write to me and respond to that. And, you know, I, I had a reader say, you know, I've had this dream like in my heart for so long and I read your newsletter and I'm starting to realize that I should do it and I should move forward. And it's just, 
oh, you know, I sit there and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, yeah. like, I'm so happy. Like it makes me so happy That's so to awesome. connect I love that. and to hear that and to know that I made a difference. Cause I mean, that's why I write, mm-hmm. I write because I want to give people an escape. I want to give them, you know, just, and because that's why I read, I love it. Yeah, and it's just same. an enjoyable thing to do. Like I really, it makes me happy. You know, I even go yeah. through the emotions, even if I'm crying or whatever the book is making me feel like, I just love it. And I want to be able to give that back to you know, the people who read my books too. I love that. And it's reading books is a safe way to explore a lot of different feelings, you know? Yes. Cause you don't, I don't know. A lot of us don't um, show our emotions a lot. I know mm-hmm. I don't show my emotions mm-hmm. a lot in real life, um, right. but I love reading where there's a lot of emotions going on and, you know. Oh, yes. So I, I completely agree with that. I mean, I, I do. And it's funny how you say that because it is the safe place. Mm-hmm. It's a safe place for you to, to feel yeah. And like you said, to go through those emotions and, you know, to, to cry. Or to see how sad, other people, or... you know, their characters, but other people might handle a situation. Yes, and exactly. It you know, might be successful. Was... It might not, but you still right. get to see it. So <laughs> it's like having the benefit of hindsight, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When you say like, oh, looking back, if I had only known. Yeah, exactly. And, right. And you can get that through reading and just picturing it and being a part of, you know, like a fantasy fictional life just for a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, you do, you feel like almost like those characters are friends. I mean, yeah. And that's one of the, that's one of the things I really love about, um, series is that you get to hang mm -hmm. with people over, you know, however many books and that's, that's a, I love when an author gives you a series and you keep seeing glimpses of these people's lives that you've really enjoyed. So that's fine. I do. I adore series. I, when I was a teenager, I read romance with a good friend of mine and we would go to the secondhand bookstores because we weren't buying books online. And so we right. would find, an, I would inevitably find a series. I'd pick up a book, be like, oh my gosh, it's so great. And sure enough, it'd be a series of five, 10, 15, 20 oh, books. Love that. And then I had this insatiable desire that I had to have all of them. Yes. And so now I remember, like, we're not getting them online. We're going to all of these right. random second time bookstores to find all of these series. And I still remember, oh my gosh. I'm thinking back, I know I still have it, but there was a series. And I just remember the cover was red. It was probably like a Harlequin book or something. And I found there was like six of the books I couldn't find out of 12 or something. And I went to New Jersey. With oh my, my gosh. And I found them at a secondhand bookstore and it was like the clouds parted and the sun was shining down on me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I found them. That's so funny. I love it. The things we do for books, right? (laughs) Right. That's so funny. And that's kids these days have no idea how lucky they are to have that just point and click and it'll be here tomorrow, you know, (laughs) or instantaneously if it's on your Kindle. (laughs) Exactly. You know, I had to keep a paper list with me because I had to try to remember what I had. Remember what you, yeah, I have that too. And which ones I've read, which ones I haven't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so funny. I love it. (laughs) Stephanie, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been such a fun conversation. Thank you for having me. I am so happy to be here. And I'm so happy that you asked me to join you. Because like I said, I really I love talking to you when we've had a chance to get together. And um, and your podcast is so fun to listen to. So thank thank you. you. I appreciate that. Thanks for joining me today on the Literary Escape podcast. If you enjoy hearing the behind the book story, then join me in the Literary Escape Society. We are a community of travelers who love books, or maybe book lovers who love to travel. Either way, if you need an escape, a literary escape, come join us as we read our way around the world together, one book at a time. Check out the show notes to learn more about the Literary Escape Society. And we'll see you next time on the next episode.